All right, I invite you to join in the call to worship that is printed. You who are created in the image of God, let us worship this God of all creation. We worship God by caring for the people and the world around us. You who are called to follow Jesus Christ, let us serve God as we gather together. We celebrate God's gifts of amazing grace. We respond with joy to God's abundant love. Good morning. Please stand as you are able to join us as we begin today's service.
today for your blessings poured out, even in rain, for your blessings of each morning and each day. And thank you for family and friends and life and hospitality. We ask you to bless us today. Help us to hear you, help us to understand your call for us, help us to feel your presence and receive that grace that you give. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. None of you. 
you were talking. <laughs> sun, is, sun is a blessing. Rain is a blessing. All the weather, all the different things. Have you ever seen a rainbow? That's a gift from God. You have seen one? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so back to natural talents and gifts. Who has a natural talent and gift? What do you got? Really good at soccer? You're better at other things too. You're bad? What do you got? Singing and making things. Very good. What else? Really good at running. Go running. And cheering. Okay, so there's a picture of somebody with a violin. There's some people musical. There's some others. You play. Yep. Yep. And there's this, there's a ball that looks like a basketball, but it's a basketball, volleyball, soccer, baseball, softball, tiddlywinks. That's my, you don't even know what to do. <laughs> you have not lived till you play to do I'll tell you later. Uh, so, there are lots of natural gifts and talents, uh, lots of instrumental people, lots of musical people, people who read and speak, people who are good at math. Anybody good at math? Yeah, there you go. You will have all kinds of good jobs available for you. Uh, so, there are lots of different gifts that God gives you, and the, the idea is that we are supposed to develop those gifts and use them in the world. And we're supposed to use them to help other people and make other people happy or help other people in other ways. Um, and that's what we're talk I'm talking about today in the sermon. It's called stewardship. We're being people who care for others and care for the world. And so uh, the other picture on the back of this is uh, gardening, people caring for the earth and caring for for the world. And so that's the topic today. Everything you have is a gift from God. Everything we have is a gift from God. And we're able to use it and share it and help others in the world. And that's kind of the point. That's what we're trying to do. Okay? Let's say a prayer before we go back. If you have to meet your God, thank you for all your gifts. Help us to share and care. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. If you want a color and page, grab it and credit it. If you don't, that's okay. The eyes of all the synagogue 
were, were fixed on him. Then Jesus began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Our next reading, Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put in your, into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Our next reading, Luke chapter 12, verse 48 b From everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required. And from the one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. Our last reading, John chapter 15, verses 7 through 12. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you give much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandment, commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. The word of the Lord. Responsible means you care 
and you help and you support others. Responsible, able to respond when needed. To be responsible, you must stay fit and flexible and focused and be able to respond all, all at the same time, fit and flexible and focused. It's a challenge. It is also a gift. It's a calling from God to be able to be responsible in such a way. Um, Presbyterians are usually pretty good with money. Let me rephrase that. Sometimes Presbyterians are a little tight with money. Maybe even a little more than tight with money. Our Scotch, we come from Scotland and our Scotch heritage makes us careful in spending, thrifty in spending. Some people joke that that is even joke, this is a joke, I'm underlining. Some people joke that that is why in the Lord's Prayer we say debts and debtors rather than trespasses because maybe we, they're more concerned with debts and sins and, and so on. That is a joke, I said it again. Um, that is not in reality the character of being Presbyterian. The debts in our translation of the Lord's Prayer actually is not about money at all. It is about, debt is about remembering all we have been given by God, and therefore remembering all we owe to God, the debt that we owe to God. That's where we get that translation. We want to be responsible. We want to be able to respond if something bad happens, and we need rainy day money or uh, emergency money. It's a fine balance of of knowing when to save and when to share, when to be careful and when to care. Uh, that goes for time and talent as well as money. There, there, are, there are limits, so we know that there are limits. And we don't want to wear ourselves down by being too, by doing too much. Uh, we, don't, we don't want to leave ourselves wanting by not being careful. We want to be able to respond when needed. Uh, the thing is, the limits of our resources, the limits of our time and talent and money and other resources, the limits are not as fixed as we sometimes think they are. Not as fixed as we sometimes fear they are. I say, often, I say I don't have time. But I do have time. I have the same amount of time as every other person. I have the same amount in every day. I just want to be careful how I use that precious hour. Uh, and sometimes guarding my time is, is so that I'm not exhausted when I need to be able to respond. So we are careful in all that we do. And, it, and it's so in the church as well. We can't do everything. We, we're careful about what, we, what programs we choose to support, what missions we are able to start, when, when to try new ideas. We are careful. We are responsible. But here's the thing. God's gifts are not limited. God's gifts are abundant and overflowing. Grace pours down and rains over us. God's grace is infinite. There is no limit. God provides for us everything we need and more than we will ever need. God provides. Being responsible not only means being careful, being responsible also means trusting God. Trusting that God who loves us and leads us, trusting that God will also provide for us, as God always does. And God will respond, God will offer everything we need to respond with generosity and joy. Sometimes resources are limited, but sometimes they are not. Uh, fear makes us fall into the trap of seeing scarcity or being cautious. Trust, trust encourages us to be confident in God's grace and to move forward where we believe God is leading. We are responsible. We are able to respond by God's grace. Today's scripture, as I said, uh, may seem a bit random. It, I kept piling it on. It's kind of this eclectic pile of ideas. Uh, and I do admit that this is more than my usual numbers. Thank you, Seth, very much. Uh, because the Bible is absolutely full of verses about responsibility 
and stewardship. We could have spent the whole hour just reading the scripture. The Bible is full of scripture about, about caring for others and trusting in God. In Genesis chapter 1, the first of our readings for today, God creates humanity and gives us dominion, not domination. Dominion, not domination. Dominion over the fish of the air, the birds of the sea, and so on and so forth. God doesn't set us over the earth as superior or more important. God calls us to be responsible, to care for the earth and all that is in it. We are the image of God. We are the image of the creator, the one who creates, the caregiver, the one who cares. We are not those who can take and crush and destroy anything we want. That is not who we are. Rather, we are those who use the power we have been given in order to help everything else and everyone else to flourish. That's our call. We have authority given by God. We must use that dominion as God would use it. For me, that means love and care, compassion, encouragement, responsibility. In the second reading from Genesis, we see that this authority, this responsibility, has been passed down through families of the earth. God calls all people to carry stewardship. Everyone, all people, God calls. But God knows that because of sin, greed, selfishness, fear, failure, because of these things, God knows that sometimes humans fail. So, this scripture passage reflects that God calls people of faith, like Abraham, like Abraham's descendants, like us, God calls people of faith to be responsible with others when others might fall short. To be responsible. That means we must be responsible even when others are not. God says, I have blessed you in order that you might be a blessing to the families of the earth. Your blessing comes so that you might be a blessing to others and all the families of the earth. Now notice it's not just your family, not just my family. All the families of the earth are to be blessed by you. And with each successive generation, God passes that down, both blessing and call. God passes it on to us. That is our call today, blessed in order to be a blessing. In the Gospel readings and in the life of Jesus, uh, we hear God's call again and again and again, over and over, to be responsible, to care, to love as Jesus loves and shows us how to love. We are called to respond to the needs of the people around us, to share the gifts that we have been given. Pay attention, listen, care, share. That's our call. If you are blessed, if you have gifts, if you are loved, let me rephrase that. Since you are blessed, since you have gifts, because you are loved, share. Share as freely and as fully as you have received. And as the verse from Luke says, the measure you give will be the measure you get back from, from those whom much has been entrusted, much will be expected. It's your calling. I've heard these verses used in the past as a kind of a bargaining quid pro quo pro with God. If you give, then God will give to you. And that is about as far from the intent as I believe God has. Uh, the truth is, God doesn't bargain. God blesses. It's not that the gifts are only there if you believe God. It's not that the gifts are just there if you promise God. The gifts are already here. All of God's gifts to us are already here, whether we know this or not. God's gifts, God's blessings in abundance are all around us and for everyone, everywhere. God blesses. Whether you believe it or not, God loves you. God doesn't wait to love us if we love God. God doesn't wait to trust us if we trust God. God loves us first. God trusts us first. And God entrusts us with gifts and blessings and talents and possibilities. God gives us everything we will ever need and more than we will ever need. 
And God doesn't do it to test us. God does it just to love us because that is who God is. God is one who loves. God loves freely and fully and abundantly and graciously. God loves. That's who God is. What the scripture is actually saying is that, that God's blessings to us are free and clear. They are ours. They are yours. Pressed down and overflowing, as the scripture says. God gives generously and abundantly, but sometimes we don't see those gifts. We don't trust that blessing. We fear and we worry and we wait for proof, perhaps. We are cautious because, you know, that's who we are and that's what the world is. The world, bad things happen. So we are cautious. But the scripture says, don't let the fear overtake you. Let faith empower you, make you able. Receive the gifts of, of a loving and generous God. Receive the abundance and the certainty of our God of grace. Believe it and be blessed. Trust God. Then move forward as you are able. Respond as you are able to move forward by God's grace. Beloved, beautiful, blessed, gifted children of God, people of God, be responsible to God. Share the unending, overflowing, abundant, amazing love of God that has been poured over us, over you, and over all the world. Love, care, share by the grace of God. Amen.
pray aloud, pray aloud from where we are, and then close, uh, you know, whatever you're saying, according to your mercy, we will all respond to your prayer, we'll keep praying, and uh, God will hear even the thoughts of our hearts, and then we'll close with the Lord's Prayer at the end. So let us pray. Generous God of grace, God of all creation, you have blessed us with blessing upon blessing, and we are grateful. At this season of harvest begins, we count those blessings and we remember again your bounty, all the ways that you touch our lives and transform our world with joy and peace and mercy and comfort. We hear your call to share that grace with others, to offer our gifts to be used for others, and to care for the people and the community you have entrusted to us. We pray direct our days and our actions that our lives may be an offering to you. Help us to be responsible stewards of your gifts and your, your world. Help us to be your servants of grace. Gracious God, we thank you for all of your gifts to us, for family and friends and familiar faces and new friends among us, for strangers just outside the door. Help us to welcome one another and to see in each other your gifts and your grace and most of all, empower us to show and to share your love, as revealed so clearly and completely in Jesus, your Son, our Savior and Lord. Gracious God, we pray for all the concerns of the world, for all those needs in our lives and in the lives of people in the world. And we pray your grace for each concern, and we give thanksgiving for each joy. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Pray for those who are traveling. I pray traveling mercies and grace and that uh, they get where they're going and return safely. Lord, in your mercy. I pray for Laura and Eric Morley and their family as they uh, have lost both parents. And I pray for the Boner family as they are uh, going through this process of saying goodbye. Bless them today and tomorrow. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. I pray for all who are going through cancer treatments and cancer diagnosis and uh, the waiting and the uh, various stages of treatment and growth. I pray your mercy and your, your healing power. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, I pray for all in need of tenderness and care, even those we don't know about. You know our needs, you know what is at the front of our hearts. We pray, bless us and help us to be a blessing for others. Lord, in your mercy. We pray with gratitude for all the ways you have blessed us, and we thank you most of all for the love you have shown us in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Who taught us to pray as we now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And may it not be to the vision that deliver us from evil. Stand as you are able and join us as we conclude today's service.
Christ the King, he is exalted in our lives and present wherever you go, God is with you. You have received God's blessing, go out and share that blessing in the world. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen.